course, Loraco's Leap, the signature obstacle, the largest jump on the AMA Motocross Championship circuit here. So. What's up? This is Blake Baggett. We're here at Redbud, Michigan, and we're going to talk about Loraco's Leap. Uh, that one's probably fourth gear. I'm not really sure, but uh, fifth's a little too much, so fourth gear, and it's starting to wind out right at the top, but uh, shifting there would be a little bit sketchy. Yeah, going through the turn before it, you definitely got to uh, carry your speed and, and try not to stab it, but uh, you, you just got to have a good line and a good rut, because uh, if, th if that ends in there on a light spike, you won't make it. The 450 is definitely having an advantage on the Rocco's Leap just because the power, you know, they got another 200 cc, so uh, definitely they can go inside and just grunt it and get right over it. Well, we got to carry our momentum around the outside. The track came around, they made those good berms, and uh, got to get to the front somehow. Just happened, you know, in practice I didn't think we were going to be able to do it, so just came around and thought about it when I was in the corner and just sent it. He usually takes the struggle. There he is, airing out the Rocco's leap. Jeff, I don't know, did we see any 250 riders do no. that in practice? No, so Baggin, first rider to air it out to use the horsepower. Wow. Yeah, I definitely used it to, uh, to pass through the jump and the leap was uh, a little bit faster, but uh, you had to really do a lot of setup for it. And, and get it clean because shorten that thing wouldn't be pretty. But uh, yeah, once I got up to Justin, I quit jumping it for a while. And then uh, once I got out front, then I started jumping it again. Yeah, no, the Rockers League was pretty sweet. So uh, a few times a little sketchy, almost came up short. But uh, definitely uh, look forward to next year and, and hopefully we can jump it again.